In this viscast, you'll learn how to solve a basic projectile motion problem. This would be worth a merit in NCEA. The idea is we have a motorcyclist here, and um, we want to determine the speed, the horizontal speed, that is required for the motorcyclist to hit the target over here. Now, if he goes too slow, he's going to be in the drink and uh, be eaten by the crocodiles. goes too fast, and he'll miss the target. Um, so we want to work out what the horizontal velocity is. To do this, and for any projectile motion problem, you always start the same way. Um, I recommend you draw a table. So in the table we have, uh, just make it a nice simple table like this. In the left hand column here we have our vertical information. And in the right hand side we have our horizontal information. So for the vertical we want to use kinematics. And the reason for that is that in the vertical direction um, we have an acceleration due to gravity. In the uh, horizontal we're going to use the basic formula from year 11, uh, d is equal to v times t. And the reason we can do that is because in the horizontal direction there are no forces acting assuming that we can ignore friction, which means that um, the horizontal velocity is always constant. So next step is we um, look at the information we're given and we put it in the appropriate column. Um, so to start with we can see here that uh, we're given the, the horizontal range, um, that would be dh, a uh, little h for horizontal and that's equal to 48 meters. Um, we're given the 19.6, that is the vertical distance. So in the vertical d is equal to 19.6 meters. Um, now we uh, we also know what the initial vertical velocity is. Uh, initially, the vertical velocity will be zero. The horizontal velocity we're trying to determine the velocity required to hit the target. In the vertical, because the uh, motorcyclist will be in free fall, we know that the acceleration will be gravity, and that is negative. Uh, we'll make it uh, negative 10. Now in the exam you want to use the uh, the value they give you. Sometimes it can be 9.8. And that's negative 10 meters per second squared. And um, time we don't know. But what we do know is that for a projectile motion problem like this, the time it takes to get from... Um, to go horizontally to the target is the same time as it takes to fall vertically to the target. So the horizontal time is exactly the same as the vertical time. So what we'll do, um, to solve for the horizontal velocity, we need to have the time. We can use the left hand side, the vertical information, to determine the time. And then we can uh, use that time to work out the horizontal velocity. So next step is we would want to use kinematics to solve the time. And our kinematic equations are here. So these equations will be given to you on your formula sheet. And um, we want to find an equation which has got distance, initial velocity, acceleration, and time in it. Which basically means that any equation with Vf in it, horizontal velocity Vf, we can't use because we don't know Vf. So that one's gone, that one there is gone, and that one's gone, which leaves us with equation 1. d is equal to vit plus a half at squared. So using that equation, uh, let's have a look here. d is vit plus a half at squared. The vertical distance is 19.6 meters. Now the initial velocity is 0, and 0 times t is just 0, so 0 plus a half times 10 times time squared. At this point you could just put it into solver on your calculator. Um, I'm going to do this by hand. So 19.6 is 5t squared, which means that 19.6 divided by 5 is t squared, which means that t will be the square root of 19.6 divided by 5 at this point we would get the calculator and we want to know what the uh, square root of 19.6 divided by 5 is. 
So we get a time of 1.97989. So we'll just make that. Uh, so 1.9. Seven nine eight nine eight nine. That will do. Okay, because the times are the same for both the horizontal and the vertical, that means that this time here, one point nine seven nine nine, is the same as this time here, one point nine seven nine nine. This now becomes quite simple because we've now got two out of the three things we need. The, uh, the final step is to say, well, the uh, d is v times t, which means that the horizontal velocity will be distance divided by time. Putting in numbers, the horizontal velocity will be 48 metres divided by a time of 1.9799. Come back to our calculator. So we're going to go 48 divided by the previous answer, which gives us a time of, sorry, a horizontal velocity of 24.24. Now, if we're going to round the correct number of significant figures, we should be doing that to 2SF, given that the, uh, the 48 is the lowest number of significant figures given in the problem there. So the answer will be 24 meters per second. So coming back here, 24 meters per second. So that is the velocity required to hit target. Now we can do a quick test. Okay, so we crank up our speed to 24 meters per second. Actually, we'll try a lower speed first so you can see what happens. Okay, so at 20 meters per second. Yep, down to by the crocodiles. Move it up to 24 meters per second and we should safely hit the target. Perfect. So a problem like that, as I said before, will give you a merit in, in uh, NCEA, and um, excellence is only a couple, well, one step harder really. Uh, and excellence, you're invo it involves the entire range, starting from the ground and finishing at the ground. Um, and that is in my next episode. Okay, so welcome to the first uh, bloopers reel, um, where I made mistakes in my video. Uh, this is only a minor, but I thought it's important I point it out to you because um, it will make a difference in other problems. Um, so the issue is here that when I told you that the vertical distance was 19.6, it should actually be negative 19.6, and that's because it's going down. Um, and in addition to that, the acceleration here is also negative, but I didn't pick that up in this equation here, which means that at this point here, that should be a negative, that should be a negative over here, negative 10, which makes that negative 19.6, that negative 5t squared. In the end, as you can see, the negatives will cancel out, and you'll still get the same time of 1.9799 seconds. Uh, but as I said before, it is important that you are aware of this and um, do it properly in future.